I. Damn hero. So listen, um, this is a short talk about doing the best you can in order to become the best you can be. Yeah? So I'm talking about your job, your career, whatever, you know, whatever you're doing right now. Whatever job you have, whatever profession you have, whatever your career is, you need to give the very best you can if you want to become the best, right? So if you want to become a better person, uh, you need to give 100% of yourself at your job, you know? I mean, so many people hate their jobs and, um, you know, they're talking about quitting their jobs. They're not happy there, you know. Uh, but you've taken the job. You're getting paid for it. Whatever the conditions, whatever your conditions at your place of work, you need to give 100%. Right? If you're a cleaner somewhere in some fast food joint, you need to give 100% because you took the job. And if you're not prepared to give 100%, then quit and do something else. And give somebody the chance to give 100%. If you're the CEO of a company, give 100%. Right? If you're a doctor, give 100%. I'm saying that because just today, right, um, I saw this patient, this, this woman, this 19-year-old um, woman, right, and she came in complaining of back pain. And she told me that, you know, I mean, before coming into the ER, this ER, right, she saw her own um, family doctor, right, just two days ago, just, you know, I mean, two days ago, yesterday, actually, you know, during the day. I mean, now it's four o'clock in the morning and she told the doctor that, you know what, I've got back pain and I'm coughing for about a week now and the pain is getting worse and worse. And it's at my back, yeah, left side, um, lower back. So then she told me that, you know, the doctor, her doctor did not even touch her, right? He said, oh, you have a cough, uh, you've got back pain, uh, yeah, you know, maybe you're coming down with a bronchitis. Uh, let me give you this antibiotic, and here we go. So she left, but she wasn't getting much better. So tonight she came to the emergency room. So I saw her, and she told me the same story, right? And she showed me some antibiotics that she's got, like three different types of antibiotics, right, which is another kill. And, and she told me the story, and she said, yeah, so I saw my family doctor uh, during the day in the afternoon. I told him that I've been coughing and coughing and coughing non-stop for a week, and I've got this severe back pain, and when I cough, the pain is worse. I said, oh, okay. So I examined her, right? I listened to her lungs, and it was clear that she had all the signs and symptoms of someone who might have a massive pleural effusion. Meaning, you know, some fluid is accumulating into your lung, right? Into, um, into the pleural space of your lungs, right? So, um, I told her that, look, it looks like you've got the pleural effusion here. I sent her for x-rays, and the results came back as a massive pleural effusion. So um, on the x-ray, you could, you could only see uh, a third of the lung, about 30% of the lung was still visible. The rest was filled with fluid, right? So, uh, I mean, I was, I was a little bit um, annoyed because I thought this, this doctor, I mean, her family doctor didn't do his job, right? But anyway, I drained, um, I gave her a local anesthetic pushing the drain in there, and I drained the fluid out, right? I did a pure tap. So um, I drained uh, about a liter of fluid, and then I, I stopped, because if you drain more than a liter, um, then, you know, the patient will run into some complications there, so it's best to do it step by step, right? So I took out a liter of fluid and sent it up to the ward. 
So now she's in the world, you know, she's going to be under the care of, um, of, um, of an internist, you know. But that's the problem, man. You know, this guy did not do his job. You no, know? he's cutting corners. And you can't do that, right? Whatever job you have, whether it's your own job or whether you're working for somebody, you know, you need to give a hundred percent, one hundred percent all the time. You know, if you give a hundred percent, then you're receiving a hundred percent satisfaction, right? Because I think that as a doctor, for instance, right, if a patient comes to you because they're sick, you know, they're not doing well, and uh, you know, you just cut corners and maybe you want to go home or uh, you're not very interested, you're not motivated and, and you don't give them the proper treatment they deserve, uh, then you're doing yourself a disfavor, right? I don't think you're going to go back home after your shift, after your call, you know, after your duties and sleep comfortably. I'm sure in the back of your mind you'll be feeling like, ah, maybe I should have done more, right? Plus, your reputation will always precede you, right? So if you're known to be the best in your field, um, you, you're going to get positive feedback and things will happen for you. And I think that's one of the keys to success, right? Do the best you can in all areas of your life. You know, when you say be better than yesterday, it's not just about being better than yesterday socially or when interacting with people, but it's to be better than yesterday in everything you do in life, your social life, right? Your family life, right? And of course, your place of work, right? Give a hundred percent and be the best in your field, right? If you're a cleaner, and, 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 I'm, ref and, and I'm using the cleaning reference, the cleaner guy, because, you know, being a cleaner, I mean, you think about the menial job, not too much effort, you know, you just clean the floor. But if you're the best at doing that, people will notice you. And very soon, you're going to move from being the cleaner to being the supervisor of the cleaning team. And from there, if you're the best at doing that, you're going to move up and up and up. And that's how you get some people, you know, who have some miracle success stories who started at the very, very bottom and ended up at the top of their profession or companies. Don't cut corners. Don't sell yourself short. Be the best at whatever you do, right? Yes, sometimes it's tough. I mean, look, it's four o'clock in the morning here in the ER. I'm actually in the research room because, um, uh, but, but I mean, don't worry. It's all under control. I've got two patients there. I've sorted them out. They're comfortable. Uh, I'm waiting for their blood results. So it's not like I'm doing some video here while patients are dying outside. No. Things are under control. The four nurses just outside. Uh, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, it would be a bit sad for me to shoot my own videos where patients are waiting outside. No, 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 no. So it's under control. It's four o'clock in the morning. Like I said, there's only two patients waiting outside. But, but yes, this is my point, right? Be the best you can be. If you're a police officer, you have to be the best. Imagine you're responding to an emergency, half-hearted, right? And you're not really doing your job. And I mean, imagine what will happen. You're a firefighter and you're responding to an emergency, but you know, the team is not very motivated. You're doing the strict minimum. No, do the best you can do all the time. Years ago, years ago, when I was an intern, right? So we're talking about uh, 15 years ago. I remember as, as, as medical interns, right? So uh, junior doctors, right? Um, the pay was the worst. You know, we used to joke that, you know, our salaries were lower than the, the hospital cleaners. Yeah, because when you're an intern, they, you don't get paid, man. I mean, they give you peanuts, right? And, I mean, we were working extra long hours, man. And I remember this intern who used to say the, the, the same line all the time. So, first of all, he would do the strict 
minimum for his patients. The strict minimum, right? He would just do enough for him to coast through the day and not being reprimanded. Because he would always say, yeah, I've done A, B, and C. And the patient is okay. But he would know that he should, have, he should have done more, man. He should have put more effort into it. He should have done more investigations. He should have had a proper plan, a proper discharge plan, and, 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 and so and so. He should have, you know, but he was always cutting corners. And I used to ask him, man, dude, seriously, you're just going to leave it like that? Shouldn't you do more for this patient? And his answer was always the same. He would say, well, you know, for the peanuts they're paying us, I think I've done enough for the money they pay me. And in life, you have a lot of people like that. They tell you, well, for the money I get paid, I think I've done more than enough. You're not working. Yes, you're working because, you know, you're making money, of course. But what you're doing at work is a reflection of yourself, right? You're a medical intern, they pay you crap. But that's a situation for interns all over the world, you know. You knew that before you became an intern. You knew that when you were in medical school. You know? Being an intern is a learning curve, right? You're more learning the art of being a doctor than actually um, being 100% into the profession, right? It, it's a lot of learning, acquisition of skills and stuff like that. This is the time when you need to give 100%. When you need to give your heart and soul into what you're doing. Because you want to learn more and more and more. You know? And when you do that, if you're an intern, your professors, your teachers, your consultants, you know, your... your um, your seniors will notice you and they'll be keen on teaching you more and more. And after one year of internship, you see that those who are eager to learn, you know, are the guys who are going to become the best doctors in the end. All right? When you're exhausted, you've been on the floor for 14 hours, you really, really want to go and sleep or eat or something or take a break. All right? And then the most senior surgeon in the hospital is about to perform a tough, difficult operation and sees you and calls you and says, hey, you want to come and assist me? You know, that's a very interesting case, uh, some kind of rare tumor. Um, let's go to the operating room. And you say, oh, yeah, but I'm tired. And by the way, you know, I'm doing overtime now. I was supposed to go home, so I think I'm going to go home. Sure, you go home. But you, you are never going to be called again by that doctor, by that surgeon. Because they'll notice that you know, you're not keen. But when you're always the first to volunteer, you know, your seniors will notice you. And they'll be keen on teaching you new techniques and new, stuff, new skills. You know? And at the end of your one year of internship, I can guarantee you, you'll be the best intern that you can be. And talking about medicine, that's why some, some interns, after one year of internship, right, you look at the level of skills they have, it's unbelievable, right? Unbelievable. Talking for myself and not throwing flowers at myself when I did my internship, right? Um, I, was, I was in a very, very extremely busy uh, hospital, academic hospital, you know? with a top trauma unit. And I used to, of course I was living in the hospital, like most interns, but I used to work extra hard. I was volunteering for all procedures, right? And at the end of my one year of internship, or towards the end of my one year internship, actually when I was six months into the, into the job already, I could do procedures that uh, qualified doctors that had been working in the same hospital for two years, three years, could not do. I mean, they used to call me the, the, the central line experts, right? When I was an intern, 
there was a case needing a subclavian central line. Consultants, right? Res senior residents would actually ask for, hey, um, where, where's the houseman? Where's Dr. Bayer, man? I mean, he's very good with central lines. Could you please call him over, man, and let him do that, right? So, so, so that's my point, man. I mean, be the best you can be at, at whatever you do. Give a hundred percent or don't do it, right? Give a hundred percent or don't even try. There's no point showing up if you're not, if you're not gonna give a hundred percent. But if you show up, right, you're putting your name on the line, your reputation on the line, right? So you have to give a hundred percent. It's not just your name. It's your family name. It's the name of your family, right? Just think of it this way, right? You're showing up for something. You know, you're representing your name. You're representing your family, right? So give a hundred percent. And I can guarantee you this is going to pay off. Right? People will see that. I mean, sometimes, you know, it's extremely busy there. And like yesterday, for instance, right? I mean, uh, I did a night shift. And it came 7 o'clock in the morning, I was supposed to leave. But there was this patient right here in that, in, in that bed here who was dying, right? So um, I intubated her and, you know, we did a full research on her. And, you know, she, uh, she, she, she survived. But then came 7 o'clock, I handed over the case to, um, to the morning shift's ER doctors. And I could have just handed over and then disappeared. But, you know... Because I knew the case, because I worked on the case the whole night, I decided to stick around, you know, for another, for another 30 minutes, you know, just to make sure that there was a proper handover, you know. While some doctors could say, okay, well, that's the patient there, you know, I did A, B, C, D, and uh, ciao. And then you hop into your car and disappear. Yeah, you could do that. Nobody's going to blame you for that. Your time has come to go home. But if you're given a 100%, So yeah, you know, just, just think about that. Um, be the best you can be. The best you can be right? Be, be the best. It's, it's, um, for me, you know, it's always frustrating when I, when I, when I look at, uh, at some people. They don't really give a hundred percent. Yeah? Now, I have just moved into this new city here. Um, very, very recently. And I've just moved into uh, this new apartment, right? So obviously things need to be set up, you know, my, my, my Wi-Fi, I'm setting up my Wi-Fi, I'm setting up this, um, you know, contractors are coming to the place, they're fixing this and that. And I am shocked to see that so many people are doing some kind of half-hearted job, man, right? You call this guy to come and uh, do some Wi-Fi installation in your house. You make an appointment for 8 o'clock in the morning, you know. I reschedule my, my daily schedule to be there at 8 o'clock. I show up at 8 o'clock. I'm there instead of being somewhere else where I should be. And the guy doesn't show up. 8 o'clock, 8.15, 8.30, 8.45. I call and call and call. No response. 9 o'clock. Finally, I get him on the phone. I said, what's going on? Are you coming or not? Oh, yeah, you know, uh, I forgot this one piece of equipment and I've got the wrong router. So, yeah, we can't do this today. Let's make this tomorrow. What? I mean, when were you going to tell me that? I mean, we had an appointment. That's highly unprofessional, right? This other guy was supposed to uh, install this, uh, this um, piece of electronic in the house, you know, um, it's a security system. He was supposed to come in the afternoon at one o'clock and he didn't pitch. He didn't call, he didn't apologize. I called the guy later on and he says, yeah, you know, the weather was not too good, it was too windy, and uh, I had to do some work on the outside of your apartment as well, so 
uh, I thought it was not safe. So yeah, let's do that some other day. What? I was visiting different different apartments and houses uh, before uh, before before I got my place just just uh, just this week actually, you know. And as I was visiting different places, man, I mean different. Um, Property agents, realtors, and stuff, uh, where some of them are really unprofessional, man. Like this one woman. You know? So I was on the internet and I saw this beautiful place. I liked the price, I liked the location. It was just by the beach, actually, you know, at the beach. I said, Yeah, I mean, I'd like to uh, move into this place, right? I called her. I said, Yes, when can I view the place? And she said, Yeah, well, we can, view, we, can, we can do a viewing tomorrow at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You know, I made sure I freed my schedule for 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Drove to the place, showed up at the place. 2 o'clock, she's not there. Um, then I sent her some te I mean, I called her. She wasn't answering. Then she sent me a text. She said she'd be like 15 minutes late. I said, yeah, well, no problem. You know, sometimes things happen in life. And then you showed up there. We're visiting the place. The living room, you know, uh, everything there. And when it came to the main bedroom, we couldn't see it. I said, hey, I'd like to see the bedroom, right? It's a furnished unit. Oh, yeah, you know, I think, um, you know, the key, um, the door is locked and I don't have the key. Um, the key is at the office. Um, but I called my colleague and apparently the owner of the place took the key. And so, yeah, but you can trust me, the master bedroom is as good as all the other rooms in this building, I mean, in this, in this unit, it is great. What? I'm about to pay a deposit, you know, a heavy deposit there, and the rent for the month. At least I should be able to see the place where, where I'm going to sleep, right? Yeah, but you know, I'm in the key, you know. It's be the best you can be. You know, don't do a half-hearted job because that's a reflection of your business headaches. You know, it's a reflection of yourself. You know, it reflects badly on yourself. So yeah, so uh, that's my message for uh, today. You know, give a hundred percent in everything you do. If you show up, give a hundred percent or don't show up at all. Whatever job you have, it might be, in your eyes, a crappy type of job that pays not very well. But if you take the job, give a hundred percent or don't take the job at all. And if you feel that you, know, you can't give a hundred percent, quit and do something else. Because if you're not motivated to do it, then your name is going to get a bad reputation. You are going to get a bad reputation. Right? I give a hundred percent. I give all I can for all my patients. <laughs> so yeah, that's my message to you. If you show up, do the very best you can. All right, this is Tam. Cheers.